Today's how to build is on Sonic the Hedgehog, Chaos Emeralds, and Super Sonic the Hedgehog. If you haven't already seen it, you may also enjoy my how to build video on Dr. Robotnik, aka Eggman, and his Eggmobile. Before we begin, you may want to pause this video for a moment and go collect these pieces so that you can build along with me. Now that you've done that, let's begin. So we're going to start with the shoes. Red 1x2 plate here. Uh, red cheese slope. Red 1x1 plate. Then, if you have it, we're going to take this white rubber band, wrap it around once, wrap it around a second time, make sure it's as far forward as possible, and then um, fit a uh, one by one white round plate there. A um, couple things this is going to do, it's going to make it hard for Sonic to stand right on the ground because of it, and it's going to make this connection a little looser. But if you want his shoes to look uh, exactly like they do in the video game, the rubber band will help you do that. I'm um, going to do that exact same thing for one other shoe. Again, take the rubber band and wrap it around. And then put the... Then we're going to take pure blue pants and put them on. Uh, this Sonic is going to end up being a little taller than a minifigure. About 1.5 times as tall or something like that. Um, but uh, it was the scale at which I could make a good looking Sonic. So his feet balance pretty well in a running position, which is appropriate for um, Sonic, since he uh, spends most of his time running. So, for the torso, um, there's not really a, a torso that gives a perfect um, Sonic look. Um, you know, ideally, his body would be blue with a circle of um, tan in the middle, more of an oval, really. Um, but, so there's a couple ways you could do that. You could either get a plain blue torso and paint a tan oval in the middle. Um, or you could use one of these torsos that I found in my collection, which are sort of approximations. Um, you know, the idea is being that there's blue around the edge and sort of another muted color in the center. So these are armor plates and this is, I think, a Padme torso. I thought this one was the best because it was the most circular. Um, it looks sort of like he's got, you know, a suit of armor on over his, you know, normal belly there. But then we're putting a tan arm with a white hand on each side. And then this can go on top of the legs. He's going to start getting a little wobblier. Best to put his arms out in running position. Again, take a moment to pause if you'd like to collect these pieces. Um, now the center piece here is this one by one brick with studs on four sides, also known as a Travis brick. If you don't have a Travis brick, uh, there's a link down in the description to where you can find them on BrickLink. They're in some new sets. Um, the color of this Travis brick isn't going to really matter a lot. Ideally, it would be tan, but that's a really rare color for this. Uh, I'm using white. I think that works out fine. You could get away with blue or any color, really. It's all going to be pretty much covered up. So, um, that's going to be our thing that we're going to attach everything to. But first, we're going to do a 1x2 white plate, a 1x1 tan tile. We're going to do two of those. I'm going to stick the bottom part with the tile onto the... Travis brick with the other part facing up on two sides. Then we're going to take a 1x2 plate in tan, a tan jumper plate, one of my favorite pieces, aside from Travis brick, and a 1x1 black round plate on the top. This is all going to go on the front of the Travis brick. Um, now we're going to do some blue pieces. So this is a 1x2 upward slope. On top of that, we're going to take a cheese slope and face it down like that. And a jumper plate like that. A 1x1 plate. 
and a cheese slope on the top. Now this is going to go on to the back of the Travis brick and it's going to lift it up a bit. You might be able to see the shape of Sonic's head starting to form here. Now we're going to put this aside and get some more pieces. Another moment to pause and let's begin. So a 1x3 blue plate, a 1x2 white plate Connect those with a 1x3 blue plate, like so. Next level, I'm going to have a 1x2 blue plate going that way. Cheese slope there. Next is going to be a 1x1 um, plate here, a 1x3 plate here. Then we're going to take three cheese slopes in blue, so I guess they're blue cheese slopes, going out that way, one going up the center, final piece here, one by two plate in blue, one by one plate, two cheese slopes, goes on the top, and now we're going to need four more pieces, they're all one by three slopes in blue, we're going to do um, one that way, one that way, then we're going to get the head that we put together earlier and to put this on top, it fits in, and then around this piece that's on the back we're going to put these final two one by three slopes. So uh, now we've got a head that looks um, pretty much like Sonic the Hedgehog. He's got his ears sticking up here, he's got his big eyes that wrap around, his tan uh, mouth area, lots of spikes on the back of his head, uh, all sloping downward. And now if we grab his body, the uh, top of the torso fits perfectly into the bottom of the head. Um, and so there you have Sonic the Hedgehog. Bigger than minifig scale, but I think he's got some great detail with his spines um, and the shoes. Um, you know, if you're uh, feeling really ambitious, you could try to put something on his back to get another spine or two on the back there, but I felt this was a good number of spines. Um, I thought that this life preserver piece is a really good size for the ring um, that he collects. Um, I don't have any in yellow, though I ordered some recently once I built this guy, but um, if you have some of these um, clear cylinders and a clear headlight brick, which I got in the last year's winter cottage set, um, you can put together a little sort of uh, transparent ring holder that will float them right about sonic grabbing level. So if you got those in yellow, that could be a cool way to build a little scene with Sonic here. Um, as I said, having the rubber bands on the feet is going to prevent him from standing directly on top of Lego. One thing you could do is push the rubber band forward a little bit and put a stud on the bottom of the shoe. You would want the stud to be the same color as the ground. And then if, uh, you know, this was your ground plate there, you could do that to have him stand in a certain spot. But he should always be running. He's Sonic, so uh, it would be okay to have him be a little unstable. Um, so, yeah, there you could put him collecting some rings. So there's not a lot to talk about for the Chaos Emeralds. Um, this is the standard Lego jewel piece. Um, what's nice is that it comes in a wide variety of colors, um, so um, I was able to assemble seven gems that I thought well represented the colors of the Chaos Emerald. If you are a Sonic fan, you may know that the number and color of Chaos Emeralds has changed over time. The very first Sonic the Hedgehog game only had six Chaos Emeralds, and they were slightly different colors. Sonic 2 and 3 had slightly different colored gems, and... Um, all the 3D games have been pretty consistent in their colors, but there have been changes every now and then. 
Um, however, this is what I thought was best representative of the current Chaos Emerald palette. So the colors in Lego terms are um, transparent dark blue, transparent yellow, transparent green, transparent clear, uh, transparent uh, pink. I think this might be transparent dark pink, actually. Uh, transparent um, light blue and transparent red. Um, notice here that I'm using transparent green and not transparent neon green. Um, I think actually this might be now called transparent dark green. There's a lot of different transparent green colors. But, um, you know, I'd say, uh, you know, use what gems you have. There's a link in the description to this piece on BrickLink, so you can see that all the colors exist. It also comes in orange, it also comes in purple. Um, so there's some variety in there if you want to mix up your Chaos Emeralds. So once Sonic collects all the Chaos Emeralds, then he becomes Super Sonic. Doo -doo -doo -doo. So the shoes are going to be constructed the same as Sonic's shoes, so either steal those from Sonic or just rebuild another copy. Um, the pants, if you can find a set of pure yellow pants, that's great. Um, I had to construct these, so um, sometimes you will find a leg that has a uh, yellow hip and then a different colored legs, and a leg that has a yellow leg and a different colored hip. So I often will trade out legs and hips until I have the colored total legs that I want. Um, so the best way to tear apart legs if you've never done it before is to hold up here and then wiggle off the leg outward. Um, and I usually do uh, the second leg is sometimes a little easier and then switch them out to with whatever you're doing. So there we have some yellow legs. Um, again with the torso, uh, I'm using a pure yellow torso here, and if I wanted to, I would paint a tan oval in it. Um, yellow arms and white hands is what we need here. Um, but yes, you could look for any sort of yellow torso that might fit uh, your needs for supersonic. So the first part of the head is going to be exactly the same as Sonic the Hedgehog's head. So, um, same cheek and eye pieces on the side, same um, snout piece in the front. The piece on the back is also going to be exactly the same, except in yellow, so a 1x2 upward slope with a cheese slope pointing down, a jumper plate, a 1x1 one one plate, and then a cheese slope. The only difference is that on Sonic it was facing that way, and on Super Sonic it's going to face that way because uh, his spikes point upward in the back. So the main part of the head is also going to be the same except yellow replacing blue, but I'll go through it again really quickly. 1x2 in white, 1x3 in yellow, connect those with a 1x3 plate in yellow. Cheese slope on the front, 1x2 plate, 1 by 3 plate facing that way, some cheese slope ears, with a cheese slope in the middle, continuing the main spine, 1 by 1 plate back here, 1 by 2 plate, cheese slope, 1 by 1 plate, cheese slope. Now the um, spines here, rather than being one by three downward slopes, we're going to do four of this. So it's going to be a one by two upward slope, a one by two plate, and a cheese slope. So you could build it like this if you want his spines to go backward, or if you want to view him from the front, I suggest rotating them like that, and then having the spines face out. And then the other side is just going to rotate the other way. And two more of that. And now let's put this on his head. 
So this is sort of a for a front view of Supersonic looking all super powerful and scary. If you want a better side view, again, I suggest taking the spines off, rotating them like that, and then reattaching them going backwards. Like that, and then do the same on the other side. And then you've got a supersonic that's a little more for seeing the side view of him. Um, you know, and when he runs, he sort of floats off the ground, so he bends his arms and legs back and sort of floats. So uh, this might be the way you want supersonic to move around. So I hope you enjoyed this how to build on Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, I opted for a brick built approach that ended up being larger than a normal minifigure, but I think it captures a lot of the details of Sonic really well. Um, shrinking him down to minifigure size is going to be really hard. Um, your best bet if you want to do that is probably to take one of those Chima lion helmets and paint it blue. Somebody else on YouTube already did that. You should look for that video if you're interested in that, but um, hopefully uh, some of you will enjoy this brick built Sonic the Hedgehog and Supersonic. Thank you.